scale this out to retain aspect ratio. Let's see what that looks like. Pretty cool. It's a little cramped on the edge here, so maybe I want to move it away a little bit. Now, notice its size is automatically, it's got a fixed width from the edge here. It's docked to the top left. Perfect. Now I need some font next to it. Fonts are, let's label this though, let's call this uh, Coin HUD for heads up display. Now let's go ahead and, oops, one thing with Unity, if you don't hit enter after a rename, it doesn't take it. So Coin HUD. Now we need some font here, uh, some text. And so text is a game object UI text. Not the component. This will add it to an existing game object. We want to create a new text game object. So game object UI text. Click on this. And there's this little tiny text right there. <laughs> it's kind of blurry here. Now let's talk about fonts. Um, I've brought in another font into this project. By default, Arial is the only font you will find in a Unity project. Unity does not know what fonts are or are not on somebody's system, and it actually has to turn these fonts uh, into images on the back end to display on your graphics hardware. So it's not like a true type font like you're, you're used to using in a regular system. Um, you need to bring in whatever fonts you want into your project so Unity has all that data to package into your, into your game. So you can go to websites like um, thefont.com, for example. There's a bunch of different font websites out there. You can search on license, what you can use, free for personal use, donate to author, all sorts of cool stuff out there. Um, TTF, true type fonts, and OTF, open type fonts. You take them, drag them into your project, and they're there for you to use. So in this case, I chose uh, this font called Chunk5. And I'm going to increase the font size. And now notice it immediately disappears because my, my scene here is not big enough for it. Let's go ahead and crank that up to something like this maybe. Change its color to uh, let's do white. So you don't click on the dropper because dropper is for selecting colors. I'm going to click on the little bar here. Let's change the white. And we'll call this zero. Now notice uh, that flows in the right direction. It's going from left to right, which is good because as our scores will progress that way. There's an option on here called best fit, which will take it and make it fit whatever size you're kind of going to. Caution on that approach. There's a minimum size and maximum size. This is not good for performance uh, or for the size of your game because behind the scene, for every font size, it has to take all of those fonts, uh, all of the letters, and turn them into images for every single font size. So not a good thing to do. We want to use this canvas scaler, which will automatically take our fonts and see how it scales them down and up. That's the canvas scaler working for us. The last thing that you saw in the other game was we had uh, another score in the right hand side, which was we can just duplicate this and dock that in the top right. So Shift, Alt, top right. And I want to drag this down to make it match the other guy. But now I have a problem. This guy is filling f like this. See how our text is filling this way? So I don't want it to fill that way. I want it to fill from the right on out, like that. So we're always aligned over here. Now I can take that text box, crank it out just a little bit, and maybe say something like zero points. So we have our coin score and maybe our zombie score, for example. And now we have a UI. Let's play this. Because of our canvas scalar component, we should be able to take this and just, look at that. It's perfect. We don't have to worry about different font sizes. It just works. Again, we only have three elements here. We've docked them using the anchor. We've uh, used the anchors and it's set their positions, top left, top right. Brought in the font file. And then our canvas has simply uh, set to scale with screen size and given it a reference resolution. And it just works. It takes care of all the rest of that. Now, one more thing you can do. So we have a bunch of other different components here. There's a button we looked at. There's a panel 
which is interesting because a panel is nothing more than an image which fills up space. <laughs> you could take uh, your coin HUD and all that and maybe drop it on a panel. Maybe you wanted some sort of overlay that you wanted to show, and you could uh, disable and re-enable that object just to show it. That's one way of doing it. Um, but the use case on a panel was interesting because people wanted the panel, but it's just literally an image that stretches. So we talked about docking. You can actually take images and stretch them here. Like this coin, for example, if I want this coin to stretch, this is going to look kind of funny, but if I, uh, right, if we want to take up the entire area there, we can stretch. I'm going to undo that because it's not how we want our UI to look. Take all that out of our canvas and delete that panel. Sorry, out of our panel. Now, we also have, um, we have a raw image, a slide, or a scroll bar. And all of these are typically based off images, and they have a little bit of script on them. One thing to note, um, when you want to call code methods in the UI, let's add a button here. Game object, UI, button. Let's, the button centered. And let's make this, uh, let's make this guy quite bigger. So again, this is the 2D tool, which is great for UI. Let's scale this kind of out some here. Our reference resolution is pretty big, so um, let's just 1024 by 600. All right. Now everything else is going to look kind of messed up. That's all right. I just want to. I would have to reposition. It's just was making my button look kind of silly here, and I want to show you this button click demo for the world's ugliest button here. Let's uh, <laughs> fix this guy. Scale him down a little bit. We'll just disable those and show you just a button. All right, now, when you click on a button and you want something to happen, let's say you want a level to load. Why don't we make this um, this button, we'll say uh, load level. Oops. Load level. And we'll change that font to chunk 5. And we'll change our font size up here. All right, let's create a little script. Create C Sharp script, and we'll just call this button click. Let's open this guy up. The only requirement that we need here is a public void method. I'm going to delete the other methods here. Public void um, load level, we'll call it. The API call in Unity to load a level is application.loadLevel. And you give it the scene name you want it to load. Let me load this back up again because it reloaded my project and lost focus. So we can literally just do this. application dot load level, whatever our scene name was. Uh, our main scene, I called main. We don't need dot scene or dot unity, I mean. You don't need that, you just, the name of it. That scene must be included as part of your build settings. And we'll look at that when we do our build, but just to be sure, here's our build settings. File, build settings. And you can drag and drop scenes on your build settings, or you can add the current one using this button. So if I wanted this to be included in my build, I would say, add this current scene, drag it up here to make it my first scene that loads in my game, and that's it. My game would load with this, and when I click on my button, I want it to load this. But, but I haven't wired it up yet. Let's finish wiring it up. As it stands now, my button does nothing, just to be sure. Click on this. I like to highlight over the menus just to know when it kind of responds back in. There we go. So nothing happens. Our code. Our code is complete, but we haven't assigned this code to our button yet. And this is a little bit, you have to kind of pay attention here on how this works. On your button, you can say, when you on click something, what do you want to call? And you think that you might be able to take your button code and drag and drop it over here and look at something here. And the way that you should be doing this is not like that. You should actually take your button and assign it to that game object. There it is. Now, click on the text for that button here, right there. Drag and drop from here right up to there. Very important that you do this. Now, if you look in this, it will show you for your button click code, there's your code method. So again, take your code, assign it to your button, drag it here, 
And then you get a whole bunch of things you can do. You can call different game object functions, uh, game object broadcast message, which is a real generic way to try to call functions and other game objects. Not a big fan of that method. I just want to show you some of the other API that are here. Um, I want to say button click load level. There you go. So now when I click on that button, it's going to come into my code here and call application.loadLevel main. Another API that, you, that is kind of uh, useful, application load level. If you want to know what the currently loaded level is, it's application.loaded level. And that just essentially restarts the same level over again. But let's go ahead and run this guy, application load level main. Give it one second there. Again, I kind of do my mouse over here to see when the menus respond. There we go. Click on play. I click on a low level. And we don't see anything um, until the level loads. With, the, um, with Unity now that the free version shares the same features as professional, you can have an asynchronous loading screen so you can show a progress bar. Uh, but with that API call, just a simple one there, you don't. So just like that. One other thing I want to show you, you can do with the UI elements on this game that we have, the 2D version of Vamp Kid versus the Zombie Apocalypse. <laughs> That's awesome. It, yeah, it is pretty cool. <laughs> we have this health background. So here's coins and our font and our font there. Now we have, let's pick this apart. We have this health background image. And then as a child, so this is our health background image. As a child of that, we have this green overlay. And you notice we only see a portion of it right now. Like it looks like a health bar. But down here, it's a full, long green bar. And you can, on the image script, you can basically say that you want this to fill the entire length of your game object by a certain amount. And notice, this is essentially percentage, 0 to 1, though. And through code, you can control this. So for example, if I wanted, uh, hypothetically, to just set that value to something else, I could say, um, give me my image component and set the fill amount to uh, 0.5. So for example, we could say, uh, get, assuming this code was on that particular image, it's not. I just want to show you the API for this here. We're going to say, uh, get component image. An image isn't found by default. You actually have to import uh, using unity engine.ui. And then we can say var image. That would give me my image component. And I could say image.fill amount equals 0.5. And it's a float, so I put an F after it. That's it. So that would automatically set that health bar to be halfway through. So every time you get hit, you can make it 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, until you have 0, and then you, then you uh, kill your character like we did earlier. So the API for that is, is simple. Again, anything that you can see in your UI like that, you typically have control over in code. So here we have that, uh, the fill method. And there's different fill methods you can use, radial, so you can fill like that, all different ways of doing that. But the overall idea is pretty simple. That's always kind of complicated, too, like doing the radial uh, yeah. fill method. So it's nice that they have that built in. Because when you do things like circular loaders and things like that, you try to do it yourself. It's you got to write the math to do yeah. it and all that. Mm. This, is, this mm. is a much better no, way. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, next, real quick, let's look at creating a message system. So we saw that our level ends, but we don't have any way of kind of alerting the user for that. And so we can do something pretty simple here. I've got a little code snippet of sorts called show level message. And this is going to integrate with the UI. So let's on our UI here. Uh, we'll do it on our main level. We'll just we'll make this work uh, how it should, I should say. We'll go scene main. And when our character dies, Go to 16 by 9. When our character dies, let's show a little text, you know, some text there. Hey, you died. Hey. You died. Or maybe go, or when the level starts, we'll say yeah. go, exclamation go. point. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you the go. way that we can do this is <laughs> we create a text image in the center here, and we're going to stretch it to be the entire width. 
So there's you don't really see anything in it right now. Let's go ahead and uh, let's change our font here. Let's change some settings on that. And we'll call this um, test message. 